Hello, welcome to Personal Finance. In this module, we're going to talk about consumer credit. Consumer credit is another name for taking out loans. So we're going to talk about some good reasons for using loans and also whether or not you can afford a particular loan. We'll also help you identify the true cost of credit. So this rel relate to what we had talked about in a prior module when we look at interest rates, because sometimes a lending company is not very clear on how much the interest cost truly is. We'll also uh, help you obtain and learn how to read your own credit report. Uh, you can develop a plan to improve your credit score. And also in the unfortunate case, if things do not go well, understand what options you have if you choose to declare bankruptcies. So let's get started. So the term credit usually refers to loans, but it actually has a long history. So sometimes it's useful to understand the, uh, the roots of how these terms come from. So credit refers to the ability for a consumer to get goods or services without paying for them first. And that ability is based on the trust on the consumer. Uh, there are two main types, uh, actually four main types of credits. Uh, the first is an unsecured credit. Uh, so this is just based on your promise to pay. So it's just your, uh, your word. Uh, and an example of that would be a credit card. A secure credit is one where if the payment is not made, then whatever is used as the security uh, can be repossessed. So an auto loan is a secure credit and the car is the secure property. Same thing for a mortgage, the house is the secure property. Another way to classify credit is whether or not it is a closed end credit. A closed end credit means that the entire amount is of the loan is given to the consumer when you sign a contract and you have to pay back in full depending on the terms of the contract. An example would be uh, a student loan that is not secured uh, or an auto loan that is secured by the car. You can also have open end credit. Uh, an open end credit is a promise by the bank um, for a uh, borrower to draw on uh, repeatedly, meaning that whenever they need to borrow money, they can obtain the fund. Uh, of course, it is uh, subject to uh, a pre approved amount. And there's no fixed end day for you to pay to pay it back in full. Uh, an example of open-ended credit that is unsecure is credit cards. And an open-ended credit that is secure is a home equity line. So a home equity line, uh, you, you, can, uh, you can open a home equity line without taking out any loan. Your house is, is used as a secure property. And you draw on that line when you need the money. Just like a credit card, you can have a credit card. You don't have to use it. But if you use it, then you'll have to pay it back. As you probably noticed um, in the prior few examples that uh, consumer credits uh, is in our everyday life. So let's take a look at some good reasons for using credit. Um, some good reasons include investing in your future. So for example, you may need a car in order to get a job. So taking out a car loan to get a car so you can get a better job uh, is a good reason. Uh, the same is true if you take out a student loan to pursue a career. Uh, another good reason for using credit is to build a good credit score. And that we'll talk more about credit score uh, in a few minutes. Uh, the other is convenience. Uh, a lot of times it's a lot easier to use a credit card uh, than to carry cash with you at all times. Uh, another use for uh, credit is part of your emergency fund in your financial plan. We talk about how much you will need as an emergency fund uh, based on your budget. And not everyone can save the entire amount right away uh, to have a credit card such that if you have an emergency repair that you need to make for your car uh, and you can keep your job without having to miss work, that can be very important. Consumer credit in general and credit cards specifically sometimes get a bad reputation. And the reason for that is sometimes people use this car, uh, credit cards and consumer credit for bad reasons. Uh, here are some bad reasons. First of all, when you use consumer credit or use a credit card, you did not take that into account in your budget. So it's not, it is money that you have to pay back. 
uh, the most important reason for uh, con uh, misuse of consumer credit is excessive st uh, spending. And this is not about moral character or willpower. Uh, there has been academic research that showed that people pay a higher price and spend more when they use credit cards instead of cash. So this is natural human behavior. And what we need to do is to recognize that and uh, pay special attention. So if you don't pay attention, this is the natural uh, course of behavior. Uh, and then another bad reason is you did not take those steps into account. So unlike taking out a, uh, a close end credit when you sign a car loan, you know that you're taking out X dollars, uh, whereas consumer credit, you will be using it without knowing how much you have actually put onto the card if you, if you don't pay attention. So here are a few terms that is useful to learn uh, when you are working with a lender uh, or taking out a loan. So first of all, most loans have some kind of origination fee, and this is true particularly for a uh, secure loan. Uh, so whether it's a car loan, a mortgage, they usually have an origination fee, but it's also true for some other type of consumer loan too. What is important is that uh, you pay attention to the document that you're signing because sometimes the fee is built into the loan and so you don't really know that you're paying the fee, uh, but it is part of the, your payment. Uh, the other things that you need to pay attention to are the penalties. So uh, look for loans in their prepayment penalty and their late payment penalty. So you want the ability to prepay uh, so uh, with no penalty. And, and late payment penalties are very common, um, so that's part of your budgeting process. The other thing that we also talk about is fixed versus variable rate. Fixed rate will give you a better sense in terms of planning for the future. Variable rate means that your payment can change and you will have no control over that. The most important question to ask for any consumer is, can you afford the loan? Uh, for this, what you want to do is make sure that you understand what your total monthly payments are. So there is a loan payment, but are there other factors? Uh, so the key question is make sure that you'll be able to meet all your necessary expenses, especially your essential expenses, uh, taking into account the loan payment. And this is where the budgeting process comes in. So if you have a budget, then you have a better idea of how much your essential spending is and therefore factor in the loan payment. Uh, sometimes uh, you may have to change your budget. So that will be part of the process. So if you want to take out, for example, an auto loan, then what else are you giving up so that you will still be solvent? So here, once again, the tools that we have already mastered, budgeting and looking at your monthly spending and income will allow you to better manage any loan that you take out. Assuming that you have a very good reason for taking out a loan, such as buying a car or buying a house, what do lenders look for? Uh, there are a few terms that you'll hear uh, lenders use a lot, and this is include car loans, home mortgage, or a credit card. Uh, so the first is something called a debt to income ratio, so DTI. The uh, to make things a little bit even more confusing, there is not a single uniform definition of what DTI is. Um, economics and finance is sometimes is a social science, meaning that it is um, developed by humans based on our human culture. So unlike physical science, there's not one universal rule. So the different definition, the first one um, is determined based on your monthly debt payment and including your rent or mortgage. And you divide your debt payment by gross income. So you take your debt payment, including rent or mortgage, you divide it by your gross income. And what lender is looking for if they define uh, your debt payment and income this way is less than 35%. This is the most common definition. Another definition is um, using your debt payment, but does not take into account mortgage or rent. 
and but and instead of using gross income, it used net income. And by this definition, the, what the lenders are looking for is less than 20%. This is a lot less common. Uh, the first option is a lot more common. So that's the income ratio. This, so this had to do with your ability to make payment on a recurring basis. Another factor that lenders look into is the debt to equity ratio. And this is your carrying capacity. So this is compute the debt to equity ratio is computed by dividing your liability by net worth. So, and this ratio varies. Uh, for example, if you own a house with a mortgage, uh, this ratio is likely going to be very high. Uh, so let's look at an example. So you put down 10% on a house. Uh, that means your debt to equity ratio will be nine because uh, your net worth will be one and your debt will be nine. So nine divided by one will be nine. Uh, if you buy a car with a 20% down payment, so that will be uh, equity will be 80%. So 80 divided by 20 will be four. So uh, a debt to equity, uh, debt to equity ratio of greater than one means that you have enough net worth to take pay off all outstanding debt and that is not very common for anyone with a mortgage you are already one step ahead of most people because by creating the um, statement of cash flow you can compute your own debt to income ratio so from your statement of cash flow you know your debt payment you know your gross income you can compute your debt to income ratio and you also have created the statement of net worth uh, the statement of net worth would have listed your liability and also would have listed your net worth so you can compute your own debt to equity ratio in addition to DTI or debt to equity ratio lenders obviously still look uh, will look at other factors as well uh, one of those factors is your credit score Let's take a look at what that is. First, I want to explain the difference between a credit score and credit report. A credit report is a historic record of your credit history. And this is uh, put together by the Credit Reporting Bureau. So a credit report is a historic document of what happened in the past. Uh, the three main credit reporting bureaus are Equifax, Experian and TransUnion. So they are the bureau, the credit reporting bureaus that collect your payment history and collate them into your credit report. A credit score is intended as a predictor of your future credit behavior. Uh, so for example, a credit score uh, will tell a lender how, how likely you're gonna pay back your loan on time based on your credit report history plus other information and that is important. The way that a credit score is computed is a proprietary uh, formula that used by individual companies. So uh, the credit score does include information from your credit report plus your own demographic uh, information. For each individual, you probably have more than one credit score. Uh, each credit score will depend on the data that the credit scoring company use, uh, their specific proprietary model, the type of loan that you're looking for, uh, where the data come from, and sometimes even on a specific day because um, depending on other information, it may vary. Now, the variation from day to day usually is very minor. It may be 10 or 20 points, but it can be important for uh, you individually. Uh, you may also recognize the name. Some very popular credit scoring companies include your FICO. Sometimes they're called your FICO score uh, or Vantage score, and there are others as well. Since your credit report or information on your credit report is a uh, uh, provides a basis for computing your credit score, let's take a look at what is in your report. So each credit report is uh, generated on a specific date. So you include your name, the date the report is generated, and that particular report number. 
So you include all your important information, such as your name, uh, if you are married, uh, your spouse's name, uh, your birthdays, social security number, and so forth. Um, and this include your past addresses, so not just your current address, but your past address, sometimes up to 20 years, um, and your op occupation, once again, not just your current job, but your past jobs as well. They will also include information from public record, uh, such as bankruptcy, property tax, and um, any other liabilities that is recorded. Uh, of course, if there's any uh, problem with past payments, such as uh, accounts that get turned over to collection agencies, those will be included as well. All credit uh, companies or accounts. So account here will include everything from bank account to credit card to store loans, uh, store cards. All of those will be record recorded and they include both open accounts, meaning that uh, account, uh, credit card that is still in use as well as accounts that has been closed recently. Um, and they will also include a list of companies that have reco uh, recorded requested your credit report. So if you apply for an apartment, the apartment agency may request a credit report on um, for you. Let's take a look at how you can read your credit report. So here's an example of a uh, credit report. So it has someone's name uh, and also social security number uh, and the day of the report. So it could contain your um, address and employment your account. If you have an account that get turned over to a collection agency, you also as a collection recovery service. So that's the name of the uh, company that is the collect that is the collection agency. They may have different names, but you will see the original creditor. So here is CS robot in this example, which means this is a CS credit card and the original balance is $243. And the, it was settled um, because the current balance is zero. And this, this consumer ended up paying $72 for 23 months to pay off the balance of $243. In addition to accounts that were in trouble, they will also show accounts that are in good standing. So here it shows that uh, this person has a GMAC financing. So this is most likely a car loan. Uh, so it has a collateral. So this is a car that they use as a collateral uh, and it is current balance is $1,145. And here's a list of credit uh, inquiry history. So this shows you uh, organizations or institutions that requ requested your credit report. Uh, so for example, here an apartment rental company is requesting your uh, credit report probably when you uh, apply for a lease. Now that you've seen a sample report, let's uh, list all the potential information that you can find in a credit report. Uh, typically, they classify your payment history into three categories. The first are installment credits. Installment credits usually have a fixed payment. Interest is charged on the amount borrowed or the outstanding balance. Uh, interest and principal are both pay over a uh, specific period of time. Uh, a lot of loans that you're familiar with include mortgages, auto loans, student loans. So these are all installment credits, meaning that they will be paid back on a regular basis. Another type of credit is open credit. We already talked about this. These are non-installment credit. Uh, so these are balanced on open account. And in theory, they should be paying through every period. Uh, however, they, um, and usually they are uh, on a monthly basis. Because full payment is expected on this type of account, they will be only reported if your payment is late. So some of these services you may not think of as credit, but actually are. Uh, your phone bill, your utility bill, those are actually open credit. Because if you think about how utility works, you were using the, the electricity or the water, and then at the end of the month, you will get sent a bill. So you were using the electricity before you pay for it. So you're using the electricity on credit. So that is why they are called open credit. The last type is um, a revolving credit. 
Uh, so a revolving credit account has a preset maximum amount uh, and interest is charged based on how much of the credit that you take out uh, and there is the full payment is not required but a minimum payment is typically required each period an example of this is credit card so you 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 could go for a whole month without using your credit card then there's no payment if you do use your credit card then you have to either pay the full amount or if you pay a minimum payment then you're still in good standing but you'll be oh you'll have to pay interest uh, unlike uh, an open credit for phone bills and so forth you're expected to pay in full we're going to end the video here. In the next video, we're going to continue with consumer credits and we're going to talk about credit scores. See you soon.